Hello and welcome to the video. This is a full review of this model here. Now this is the Crocodile Baby 5. It's pretty new from Gep RC. Now I had to get one of these in because this is a bigger version of one of my favourite quads. Now actually behind me you can't quite see but there, that little gap if you're ever looking in future videos, uh, sits this little fella. This is the Crocodile Baby 4 inch. This is my favorite four inch model. Now there's also the Flywheel Explorer, which is kind of a similar class, and it will fly for ages and ages on a 4S lithium ion battery. It's actually charging behind me, uh, ready for another flight. This is excellent. And this Explorer class of quadcopter with the GPS on the back, uh, with uh, a buzzer to help you find the thing if it disappears, designed for longer flying, it's just how I like to fly. It's for me what FPV is all about. It's going somewhere and exploring and having a fantastic time. Now, there is another quad that I'm flying a lot from GEPRC. Uh, I put links below to the actual reviews of these. This is the Mark IV HD. Now, this is a tank of a model. It's fantastic. Um, definitely not a lithium ion flyer uh, standard five inch but a beautifully built five inch so these are two of my go-to quads i'm flying all the time uh, this for when i want um, something that's quite robust that i don't bother about an action camera on the top of this for pretty much everything else stick a lithium ion pack on this and i'll get 20 odd minutes of flying easily so i was excited when this new model was announced because it seems like it kind of fits between the two. So in this video, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about my experiences with this bigger brother, this Crocodile Baby 5, and uh, show you how it comes, usual stuff, unpacking, beast flight setup, flying and summary at the end. Now before we get too far into this, let me just show you how much each of these individual models weigh, just for a comparison. So the Crocodile Baby, the little 4 inch model, is about 160 grams, and then this new Crocodile Baby 5 inch model, although it's got the full size DJI unit in mind, which makes it a little bit heavier, and the Mark IV HD is a nice beefy 400 and six grams so the five inch frame is only adding an extra 98 grams over the four inch and it's 149 grams less than the mark IV. and it's only when you put the crocodile baby five next to the mark IV you can see how much thought and effort has gone to making this a really lightweight quadcopter so while I unbox this, let's go through the specs. So the arms are reinforced and also covered at the top, you'll see in a moment, to protect the cables that run out to the motors. Really nice little feature. Uh, it has the full DJI Air unit in mind. You probably saw in the introduction, there's lots of different versions. And it's got the latest GEP 2004 high efficiency motors. And the lightweight design uh, is kind of being touted as for longer range flights or endurance flying and freestyle flight. Inside this little thing, it's got a GEP F722 all-in-one flight controller. It's amazing how much of it inside of here is actually the DJI system. Uh, the actual quadcopter electronics itself is the single board here at the bottom. Obviously set up for GPS rescue, as we'll see in a minute. It will support uh, Naked GoPro. There is the stuff in the kit for actually mounting that at the front. Just undo a couple of bolts and you can pop that on the top. And the advertised flight time for this is about 25 to 30 minutes from a lithium-ion 3000 mAh battery. Although, in practice, I'm getting a little bit less than that. And I think that might be due to the way that I'm flying it. Motor to motor is 227 millimeters. Top and bottom plates are two millimeters thick and the arms are four millimeters. Some really cute touches with a bracing installed by default on here just to keep the arms nice and rigid even though they are a little bit thinner. So first thing I did before I installed the props was just plugged it into the computer and updated the DJI system. Uh, just a word to the wise, it wasn't anything like latest versions of DJI firmware. So if you're getting one, if you're running on the latest, it will definitely pay to plug it in and update it. It was activated because as usual, the little QC sticker on this thing actually does mean it was tested before it left the factory. But if you're using one of the DJI units, plug it in, make sure it's the same version as your goggles. 
So with that all done, let's plug it into Beatsflight and quickly go through. Again, dump and diff are available on link in the description. Enable expert mode, you see the little bit in the data flash as has been armed. Not a lot here, everything's moving perfectly, which is great. Ports look like this. So you can see uh, the GPS is set up, the MSP for the telemetry back to the DJI system is set up as well. That's uh, pretty much it. Configuration looks like this. So standard prop direction, D-Shot 300, 8K gyro, 4K pig loop frequency. This is an F7 processor, so it's just ticking over at that kind of level. S-Bus by default for the input for the DJI system. And then air mode is on all the time. And the beeper stuff isn't set for D-Shot, but then you've got the nice loud beeper at the back that works great. Battery and current is set like that. Failsafe is set to GPS rescue. PID tuning, very quickly show you this. Again, links to the dump and diff down below. And I've got those vanilla off the craft before I changed anything. Modes by default are very basic. So you've got an arming switch and then another switch with angle and horizon on there. I would come in here and play around with it. The mapping for the DJI FPV controller, uh, for the way I use it, definitely needs a bit of changing. And the on-screen display, definitely come in here and have a play with this. Uh, this is Everyone has their own particular way, right, that they like setting it up. Uh, that's a million miles away from mine. So before I change any of that, again, I'll just dump and diff that out so you can have a look. Nice modern version of Beta Flight, and the tune is quite nice. So speaking of flying, what's it like? Well, surprise, surprise, it is set up beautifully. All of the models I've had in from GEP RC are really, really well made and really, really nicely tuned too. And this is absolutely no exception. The DJI unit is working in exactly the way that you would expect and providing a beautiful image with no props in the view at all, even if you push it to 16.9. Although with quadcopters, I tend to fly in 4.3. On-screen display, although of course it's not recorded, thanks to DJI, is working fab in the goggles, so all of that is set up beautifully. So although you can't see it here, I'm getting information on the direction, distance to home, I've got my uh, current setup, my altitude, the speed, and the battery voltages as well. Now on the 4S Power, uh, it's hovering about the throttle. It's got oodles and oodles of power so you could definitely add some kind of skeletonized action camera on here or maybe even a full-size one without too much trouble at all using that supplied bracket and i have been testing it with a 3000 milliamp power gep rc lithium ion pack but i wasn't getting anywhere near as long as that 25 30 minutes that was advertised and that might be down to the way that i was flying and a great specific example of that is how it behaves when you are aggressive with a throttle. The voltage from that lithium ion pack was sagging below the level at which some of the low voltage alarm stuff was starting to beep like crazy on the model. And you can hear it as it flew around in the field. So be aware of that. Although they're talking about using it with lithium ion, I would probably think of this as a super lightweight 5-inch model rather than a bigger version of something like the Crocodile Baby 4. Realistically, I was getting about 12 to 15 minutes out of the battery before it was getting to the point where I was starting to get nervous and bringing it back in. So I've been flying it mostly on a standard lithium polymer pack. There's a lot to like on this model. The quality of the construction and the parts is absolutely beautiful. The way the carbon fiber is finished, the way it's put together, those protectors on top of the wires going from the all-in-one board out to the motors is a fantastic little touch. The braces mean that although this is quite a lightweight frame with only four millimeter arms, it does seem to be very rigid and it's surviving some of the crashes and bangs that it's getting without any problems at all. I do like the fact that you get the spare props in the box and the way that the antennas are held in place for the full size unit from DJI is really cute, keeping them out of harm's way.
Now, unboxing this, it really did evoke the same kind of feeling. There's lots of the same design choices for this model as in its baby brother, the Crocodile Baby 4.0. And I love that. This is one of those models that has some really cute touches in it to minimize the weight, but keep some of the strength and rigidity in the frame. And there's only a couple of things to be aware of, really. Uh, the DJI unit is not a recent firmware, as I mentioned before, so make sure you update that. Uh, standard things in the beta flight setup, have a play with the modes, have a play with the on-screen display. They're probably not going to be set up in the way that you like them. And it was that issue around the flight times I'm getting from a lithium ion pack and not as much as the Crocodile Baby 4-inch, but then I guess that's to be expected. The 4-inch is a lot lighter, it's using two bladed props, so it's not needing to pull anywhere near the same amount of power to hover and move around. I was hoping for a larger version of my beloved Crocodile Baby 4-inch, and despite some really beautiful design choices that has produced a really lightweight model, the current draw needed for flight is giving me a lot less when compared to the smaller brother. It has things like the GPS on here, it has things like the buzzer, it has all of the really smart stuff on here that a modern quadcopter you come to expect. So the way I'm thinking about this after playing with it for a week is thinking of it as a lightweight Mark IV. So a regular five inch quad uh, with a lot of the weight shaved out rather than an endurance quad with all the stuff that's on here like the GPS, the buzzer and all those other pieces still make it fantastic for exploring. It's just not going to give you the same kind of super long flight times as you're going to get out of the smaller Crocodile Baby 4 inch. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.